my name is pastor k joy i would like to share few words of my testimony listen me very carefully if you listen my testimony it will encourage you for your spiritual growth 75 years before when the pentecostal revival movement was moving in a very mighty way in the southernmost part of india revival gospel preachers came to Kailon district Kerala they started preaching the gospel with the anointing and unction of the holy spirit my parents accepted the lord as their personal savior and received holy spirit they took immersion baptism and a worship service was conducted in our home for 25 long years worship services were conducted in our own home so i used to sit in the extreme front line listening to every sermon the preachers preached i was very much interested to learn god's word from the very young age and after the preachers left home i started preaching in the same way there was no video audio or radio on those days but i myself was the video and the audio and the radio all together a studio recording every sermon and repeating those sermon i started preaching within the room courtyard outside from the age of 5 one day while i was preaching god's word outside my home nobody was listening but my mummy saw that she said joy what you are doing do not preach when nobody listens this is a symptom of a great sickness I said to my mother mom I am born in this world to be a preacher of the gospel I will be a preacher in the coming days then she remembered her commitment she made with the lord because I was born as the first male child after five girls can you imagine an indian home with five girls on those days when a child is born everybody will ask is it a boy or a girl if they come to know a boy is born everybody will say thy name be glorified and if they come to know a girl is born they will say thy will be done you understand children are the gift from the lord the bible says and the fruit of the womb is the heritage no matter is a boy or a girl they are gift from the lord but on those days this was the conception but my mother prayed just like hanna of old god heavenly father if you will give me one boy i will send him for the gospel ministry as an answer to the prayer of my beloved mother i was born as the first male child after five girls so they called me joy because i brought joy in whom praise god the spirit of the lord was encouraging within me to be a preacher of the gospel when my mother told me do not preach when nobody listens it is a symptom of great sickness i went to thick forest jungles to feed sheep when sheep were eating grasses i selected valleys and started preaching to the trees nobody saw me there all the trees appreciated my sermon by waving the leaves there was no repentance but there was no problem there was no disturbance and while going to school and while coming back from school i selected friends and started sharing the gospel what all things i learned in the sunday school bible verses memory verses i shared with my friends so it was, i was very much happy to tell about jesus and bible stories to my friends one day i saw my teacher walking alone to the school i went to that lady teacher and started sharing the gospel and bible truths till we reached home while i was sitting in the classroom as a 9 year old boy she came to the classroom and said joy stand up come to the teacher's room i went to the teacher's room the headmaster all the teachers were sitting together and they asked me joy do you preach from home to school and school to home 
I said, yes, sir, I do. Can you preach here? Yes, I was very happy to share the gospel. I started preaching to them from God's word as a nine-year-old boy. They wanted me to pray for them and I prayed for my teachers. By God's grace, at the age of 14, I completed school final equivalent to 10th grade. And after writing the final exam, the next day I said, Mommy, Papa, bye-bye, my slavery is over. And taking the Holy Bible, as a 14-year-old boy, I came out of my home to be a student of Hebron Bible School in Kumbanad, Kerala, run by in the Indian Pentecostal Church of God. I was the youngest boy ever admitted in IPC Bible School history in Kumbanad. But by God's grace, scoring the highest to mark for every subject, in the year 1968, as a 15-year-old boy, I came to the northern part of India and I learned Hindi within 15 days. I started preaching the gospel among the people of North India and house to house, door to door, I carried the gospel. But I wanted to see Jesus Christ and I wanted to have a, a conversation with the Lord. So, I went to a closed room in the year 1968 in the month of August on a Friday 3 p.m. I was all alone sitting and praying to the Lord, opening my Bible, pointing my finger to John's Gospel, chapter 10 and verse 4, where it read, My sheep heareth my voice. Lord, I am your sheep. Are you accepting my services and ministry? Talk to me right now. I prayed with the great burden of my heart. What is your will about me? And immediately a power fell on me. I fell down in the ground. My external eyes were closed. I found a man with absolutely white garment. Came to me and whispered just one word. Read Acts of the Apostles 18 the chapter verse 9 and 10. Immediately that man disappeared. I opened my Bible. It was the special message God gave to Paul the Apostle. It is like written like this. Fear not. Preach the gospel. Nobody will disturb you. I have much people in the city. I am with you. I was very much excited. Very much happy, with overwhelming joy, I came out of the room and shared my experience with one of my friends. And my friend said, Joy, a great light is shining in your face. Because that great yes, Shekinah glory was visible in my face because I found Jesus in the vision. Realizing the urgency of the gospel in the northern part of India and as an obedient person to the vision of the Lord, I started my, continued my ministry in North India. Now, by God's grace, for the last 48 years, I am ministering in the northern part of India. The Lord sent me to 14 play, uh, king, uh, these uh, countries and uh, the Lord gave me opportunity to share the gospel with many people of different caste, color and creed. And they could uh, uh, write 40 books and publish those books. And by reading the books also, many people have accepted the Lord as the personal savior. Listen, my brothers and sisters, especially to the parents, I have a message. Even though I was born and brought up in a Christian family, my beloved mother shared the gospel and told me about the need of personal repentance and rebirth. I was only an eight-year-old boy when my beloved mother told me, Joy, you must accept Jesus as your personal savior. I said, Mommy, I read the Bible, I know memory words, I preach. So she said, everything is okay. But you should have a personal fellowship with Jesus Christ. And you must confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. The words of my mother really penetrated my soul. It was a Sunday 
I, while I was eight year old boy, I stood up in a meeting and accepted Jesus Christ as my personal savior. So the Lord Jesus was real to me and he came to my heart. I appreciate such parents, fathers or mothers who will train up the child in the way they should grow. Praise God. And beloved children who listen to me, you may be born or are born in a Christian family, Pentecostal family, very good uh, Christian background you have, but that is not enough. There is no a common salvation. There is no general salvation. There is no family salvation. There is no traditional salvation, but there is only personal salvation. Each and every one of you must repent about your sin and receive Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Jesus Christ must be real in our life. Remember that. I would like to draw your attention to Psalms 51 verse 10 where David says, Create in me, O Lord, a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me. You see, David lived 1,000 years before the birth of Jesus Christ. He was a man after God's own heart. He had a personal fellowship with God. So he's calling, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit in me. See, what do you mean by heart? The heart in the cardiology is entirely different from the heart of the theology. When you speak about heart in the medical term, heart failure, heart attack, heart transplantation, open heart surgery, it is an organ of the body. But the Bible says about another heart, which is the center place of your thoughts, emotions, imaginations, willpower, desires and decisions. That heart is filthy in the sight of God. In the book of Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5, we find the first X-ray report of the human heart, which was taken 1650 years after the fall of man. In the book of Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5, we find, we read like this, God saw that every imagination of the heart is continually evil. After 1000 years, in the book of Jeremiah, we find in the 17th chapter of Jeremiah verse 9, heart is deceitful, it is desperately wicked above all things. Who can know the heart of man? So it is desperately wicked. And after 1000 years, Jesus Christ said about the heart in Mark's Gospel, chapter 7, beginning from verse 20 to 23, where we read like that, all the evil thoughts and all the sins proceeded out of the heart of man. So in Genesis 6, 5, we read, every imagination of the heart is continually evil. In Jeremiah 79 we read, heart is desperately wicked above all things. And Mark's Gospel chapter 7 verse 20 to 23 we read, all the evils proceeded out of the heart of man. Who can cleanse your heart? So in Psalm 51 verse 10, David prays to God. O oh God creator, come back. You need a clean heart. God can only create a new heart in, in you. Man may form something, make something, but only God can create something within you. So he is praying with the heart of repentance. God, you have created the shining sun and the glittering moon and the twinkling stars and the beautiful planets of the solar system. Would you please come back again? Lord, you create in me a clean heart. As an answer to the prayer, God says, I will give you a clean heart. We read it in Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 26. So when you commit your heart to the Lord, he will give you an open heart surgery. That surgery is performed by Holy Spirit through God's everlasting word. Hebrews 
chapter 4 and verse 12 says, The word of the Lord is sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces the heart. It goes within you. When the Holy Spirit will do this work, when you is he, the Holy Spirit will do this work and you will get a new heart. But you have to surrender. It is not done by force. You must pray from the depth of your heart. Creator, create in me a clean heart. Then the Spirit of the Lord and the Word of the Lord will give you a new heart. He will give you a, an open heart surgery. Old heart will be taken out and all the filthiness and dirt and evils will be washed away by a precious liquid. What is that liquid? Even if you use the waters of the five oceans of the world, your heart cannot, cannot be cleansed. No detergent, no acid, no dry cleaning can cleanse your heart. But the Bible says, the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, can cleanse you from all evil. What is the peculiarity for the blood of Jesus? He never knew sin. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, Jesus never knew sin. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 22 says, Jesus never did sin. 1 John chapter 3 verse 6 says, In him there is no sin. See, he was absolutely holy, holy, holy. Before incarnation, Jesus never knew sin. While he was in the world, Jesus never did sin. And after the resurrection, today in him there is no sin. So that Jesus Christ who died on the cross, he shed his precious blood for you. And then when you come to the Lord, surrender your life, open your heart and sincerely pray, Creator, create in me a clean heart. Through God's word, he will perform the surgery and the old heart will be taken out. It will be cleansed completely by the precious blood of Jesus Christ and you will receive a new heart. But that new heart should not be weakened. Understand it? Three yeah, things or personalities should occupy the new heart. Who are they? A yeah, patience. 317 says, Jesus Christ must dwell in you, in your heart to buy faith. Christ Jesus within the heart. Then next, Galatians 4th chapter 6th verse says, The Spirit of the Lord is within your heart. And Psalm 119 verse 11 says, I have kept your word within my heart, lest I should sin against thee. You see, in Mark's Gospel chapter 7, beginning from 20, we see 13 black humor, dark spot, illegal tenants in the sinner's heart. But when you surrender your life to the Lord, he cleanses you completely and forgives your sin and sanctifies you. But the new heart, you have three personalities. Number one, the Son of God. Number two, the Spirit of God. Number three, the Word of God. Son of God, Spirit of God and Word of God must be in your new heart. And then you will have a new birth. Until and unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. When you have a new heart, you become a new creation. Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, If a man is in Christ, he is a new creation. And John 3, 3 says you, have, you need a new birth. And Psalms 40, verse 1 to 3 says he has given me a new song. Hebrews 10th chapter verse 19 says, He leadeth me in a new path. See, what a wonderful experiences. A new heart is given to you. A new birth is given to you. A new song is given to you. Everything is new. And when you go, one day you will enter the city that is called New Jerusalem. The last book of the Bible, Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 and 2, we read, I found a new heaven and a new earth, and new Jerusalem was coming down, and God is dwelling with man. What a wonderful experience it is. Who will occupy that new Jerusalem? Who will 
be residing in the new earth and heaven those people those are they had this new heart and new experience so beloved friends do you have this experience of rebirth e no matter you are born in a christian family or a very good background you have as i told you very clearly there is no traditional salvation each and every one of you must receive christ as your personal savior and then you get a new heart and a new birth and a new life and you become a new creation and you will occupy that new jerusalem and i hope you have understood this message and if you would like to surrender your life close your eyes i will pray for you most gracious and loving heavenly father thank you for this good time you have given us to sit before your word all those who have received your word must to receive that new heart help them to learn more from the lord help them to lead a path yes life that, that is acceptable in your sight bless all those who are listening the word into thy hands i commit these all the souls who are listening this message in jesus precious name i pray amen and amen